All right, so welcome into the live stream today. As you can see, we are driving into the metaverse and one of the things we're gonna cover are some of the trending projects and tokens that are starting to hit the ground running and also some of the OGs that are really starting to kind of make their way into a strategy that could be driving a lot of the metaverse into the next layer. My name is Paul Barron and welcome back to TechPath. Let's get into this today, of course. One of the things I want to talk about first before we get started is, of course, our sponsor, which is Masterworks. If you have not looked at this, if you're into investing into alternative asset classes, this is one of those that is intriguing to me just in the sense of what they're doing. Essentially, they're allowing you to go in and invest in blue chip art. So they do it through kind of a tokenization, a tokenization process, but as you can kind of see some of the things that are flying through right there, what their purchase price is versus what they sell it for. Essentially, it allows you to go in and invest in fine art. And it's pretty simple. You, of course, you, do, you need an invite to get into this, but the concept is real simple. They have a team of expert uh, art, art concepts and art researchers that basically go out, find the best deals, they put a package together and then make it available on the Masterworks platform. And it's pretty simple. If you look at how it works, it um, jumps in. You kind of go to this website. It's masterworks.io. Learn a little bit about the, what they're doing, but how it works, they'll go in and select the artists. They go in and purchase the art, and then they securitize the artwork, which is when they make the offering out to you guys. And then if you're in the program, now you've got a piece of that art. And of course, you can also look at different ways. You can hold it until they sell the art, which they hold artwork from about three to 10 years. And as you saw there on the homepage, some of that art was going up, you know, 10, 15, 20x. Of course, this is not uh, promising anything on investments, but the point is, is it gives you some examples of how it's been uh, working. The other option is that you can go out and sell shares on the secondary market of a piece of art that you already own with them, uh, and you don't necessarily have to wait till the project sells itself. So. Check out masterworks.io. Check out our link in the description because that's going to give you some special access. All right, let's jump into the metaverse today and really kind of get into what's been um, transacting over the last, really about the last week. A lot of news has been really moving and many people are asking, you know, what, will, first of all, will the metaverse gaming, will it start to decouple from what we're seeing in traditional markets on Bitcoin, Ethereum and the major alts? And I think there are some signs that this has happened. And one of the signs that we track often is our overall CPI, which is the Consumer Power, or, uh, excuse me, Crypto Power Index. And the aspect is to look at the overall metaverse and gaming projects, look at sentiment across them, average those out, and then how do they fare against the rest of the crypto markets? And we do this against Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, DeFi market, et cetera, and then breaking down metaverse and gaming. So a lot of that has been happening. And while we've seen traditional markets declining, even though metaverse and gaming also declined, the sentiment numbers and most of those projects did not take as deep of cut this time. So this is interesting to me because this is one of the biggest uh, cuts we've seen in traditional markets. So a big one. And I think it is because of scenarios we're going to cover today. And we're going to break down one, a lot of the projects that we see as trending. And some of these are, are some of the bigger projects out there that you're gonna recognize fairly easy, but there is a handful in here that are new to the game. Uh, but really we'll dive into each of the projects and then also give you some sentiment data to kind of compare at the end. Sandbox is our first story, announcing a $50 million fund for its startup accelerator program. Now I know you guys are probably saying, wait, man, there's, there's projects out there that are doing three, four, five times this uh, right now, but I think the point behind this is that Sandbox, remember, is in a position right now where they're building within a ecosystem such as the metaverse and being able to work in uh, on their incubator and starting to curate these new developers. I think this is a good start in the sense of what they're trying to do. So it doesn't necessarily have an apple to apple comparison of say something that would be done by an avalanche on you know what they did with their recent drop or what FTX is doing. Those kind of scenarios are quite a bit different than what you see here in uh, the metaverse. The other thing that is new for uh, this right here, of course, is Sandbox's deal with Warner Music. I think this is probably one of the reasons we saw a little bit of movement in, in the Sandbox token. 
Uh, label for artists like Lizzo, Ed Sheeran, Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're going to plan a metaverse venue and amusement park through the Warner Music Partnership. Uh, plots that will be sold and probably you know developed within the application of Sandbox. So a lot happening there, I think, in the sense of this kind of partnership. This is one of those things that we have talked about before, is that venues, music, entertainment would eventually be one of the key you know, areas of e-commerce, including ticket sales, all those kind of things, but access, branding, all those elements that we would see in the metaverse first. And I think this is a good indicator that we are going to see more and more of this. I don't anticipate that it will be long before we start to see other major labels start to move in this direction and look for those kinds of partners. So I would be on the hunt right now whether you're out there researching Metaverse or not, understanding the major labels and how they would be able to leverage against this. Because many of the major labels did miss the streaming aspect. I don't think they're going to let this one pass by. So that's a big one. The other thing that is a huge indicator of positive and bullish news for Metaverse and gaming is Grayscale. They're adding 25 digital assets to its under consideration list, including DeFi Metaverse projects. The updated list of cryptocurrencies include Axie, Yield Guild Games, which we've talked before, obviously Algorand we've looked at. But I think as we see more and more of these kinds of projects moving in tra tra to traditional aspects like what is happening with Grayscale, that to me really starts to um, validate what we're seeing more and more happening. We already know this. You already know this coming to our channel. You understand kind of the growth and the definition of how metaverse is really going to affect growth, especially in blockchain. But I think also in society, we're going to see a massive uptake. Right now, it's a little bit of a push-pull between the gaming sector of you know free-to-play and versus play-to-earn, what we're seeing. I think there will be a little bit of, of pull uh, between that, but eventually I think that rubber band is going to break and we are going to see mass adoption moving in that direction. And I'll talk more, more about that really to kind of cover it, but... Uh, this is good signs with what Grayscale is doing there. Remember, that's Digital Currency Group, which I think owns half of the blockchain. I feel like they own so many different companies, including Coindesk and all the others that are out there that are really, I would say this is the largest player out there when it comes to blockchain, for sure. Another thing that's happening with Axie Infinity is applications for their second round of Axie Esports grants are live. So essentially what this means is they're going to have 75 plus events uh, over the next quarter, and I think this, again, shows you the amount of, one, creativity that Axie is trying to really plan for and look for in terms of adoption and migration into the next era of gamers, because I think that's another thing that we will start to see around Axie Infinity. So we're gonna track Axie a little bit. Uh, additionally, with that, Nexo just got in on this as well, get in the game. AXS is now live on Nexo, so you can actually go out and uh, take up an APR at 36% on this particular application. Now, if you have not checked out our staking Axie uh, video, you should check it out. It's, uh, it's a good example. But this is another way that, of course, you can earn money on your Axie is going right over to Nexo, and, uh, and it's paid out daily. So that's another big advantage. And again, this, these are positive signs for these kinds of projects. The other one that I want to talk about is a new recently listed and also released token, and that is RON. Now, RON essentially is the token that will run the Axie component, and that's going to become the utility aspect. And this is a new listing that's getting ready to go up on OK, OK, OKX. They are going to need a little bit more liquidity uh, to make this go live, but right now the only way you can get to RON is through farming. And of course, uh, if you're in the game of Axie, you get a certain amount of transactions um, in the RON ecosystem. There's a lot happening. We are going to try to do a little bit more of a breakdown. This right here is their release. RON is live. Full announcement right here. I'll just do a quick play on the video. You know, just so you guys can kind of see a little bit about what they did here. Great stuff in in terms of the just the graphics. But I think one thing about Axie that, that uh, they do really well is they understand the idea of marketing. And I think the marketing aspect of RON and how it's going to be utilized from a utility standpoint is going to be huge. This is the next major 
thing we're going to be watching very closely around the Axie ecosystem. So with that being the case, we do have Ron in the sentiment analysis. It's brand new. It's a brand new token. It's barely out right now. In many cases, it's not even available for sale, but it is something that uh, we will track as far as sentiment overall right now. Uh, and just remember, as we get into this, these are market movers. The concept behind this is just, hey, we're going to give you a bunch of information, research, and then some data analysis to help you hopefully step into the next layer for research for you, not investment advice. Hopefully, it's going to give you, so uh, though, some uh, starting points for the research side of things. Let's get into uh, Ecomi because Ecomi is another one that, again, the migration of what they're trying to do within the VV uh, app is this is a pretty significant scenario, and I want I don't want to dive too much into this. We're going to try to get um, an expert on the show that we've had on the show before. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. And I won't sneak pre- peek that out, but we'll try to get him back on talking about this uh, convergence and what we're seeing within the ecosystem of Ecomi and how VV is going to play into that. If you have not been looking at Ecomi, this is a very popular project. And it's getting more and more popular because of the fact that VV itself is starting to see some major adoption. So just watch the VV app. If you if maybe this is the first time you're watching our show, and you a lot of these things might be new to you. Maybe you're just tracking Bitcoin and you know Ethereum and some of those. These are the ter- trending projects in the metaverse and gaming sector. So you want to think blockchain, metaverse, gaming. VV is the collectible app that is probably I would easily say the killer app within the ecosystem of collectibles. Reason being is the licensing and the partnerships that they've been able to do, even with you know partners like Disney. So that alone has made Ecomi, because of its tie into Vivi, essentially is the utility aspect or will be the utility aspect, and the ability to uh, take your Vivi gems, which is how you're buying right now on Vivi, which you use fiat onboarding to do that. All of this is beginning its migration to where you're going to be able to interact inside VV and start to trade outside VV in the marketplaces and other things. So that in itself, huge trend in the right direction if you're into collectibles and NFTs. So big one there. If you look at the chart on where Ecomi is, it's starting to climb out uh, pretty well considering if you think about the rest of the market, this is where Ecomi was in the last seven days, setting it right at 0.005. And it's pulled up here to right now at 0.0075. So a nice little move for them. And if you look at the performance over the last month, there's the dip and the rise. It's almost recovered to where it was pre-drop. And then if you look at the three-month out on Nakomi, again, back to performing levels. We'll look at the one year. You can kind of see where this potentially could go. So still a lot of potential opportunity there for Nakomi. And I think it's just going to get better for them. Nakomi is, is going to be one of the hot tokens, I think, for 2022 especially when it comes to collectibles and the whole aspect of NFTs and the use case scenarios of what we'll see in the metaverse because there's going to be more and more projects that I think Ecomi is going to partner with. So watch out for some news coming there. The other one that is a big new hit is Gala Games. And this is the first chance uh, that they really talked about the Legends Reborn project. Uh, This was an acquisition and of course they now are doing a presale on their land inside of this. If you go over to their medium, which I would recommend all of you do, is anytime that you're following one of these projects, drop into their uh, their blog, which is usually run on a medium um, you know, platform, and just really follow those, because it, it's, a, it's a great place for you to get updates. Um, it's kind of like Substack, but you know, some people are using Substack, but medium I, found, I have found that many of the game projects really utilize it. But if you look at their venues that are on sale right now, uh, pre-sale is live now. It's right now. Uh, it's going to take place over the next 48, so go take a look at that. Uh, here's the selection process. So there's six venue rarities that will be available during the pre-sale. Here's the pricing, though. At Common Dive, Ta- Dive Tavern, 1800 bucks. This is not cheap stuff, but when you think about land in the metaverse and within these games, this is going to be a epic opportunity as we see more and more land sales really kind of evolving because the opportunities for what's going to happen within these land ecosystems is going to be big. And I think any game that is worth its, you know, worth its salt, if it's got good quality graphics, it's got a team behind it, if it has some user base, it has community, all those check marks that you 
kind of go through in the fundamentals of investing in something like this. If it does all those things and it has the capacity for land and there's some tenacity for it, meaning very, very good demand, then there's a big opportunity, I think, in terms of how that might be for an investment opportunity. And we've already seen this, in a, obviously, with Sandbox, Decentraland. We'll see that eventually with Axie, uh, with land sales uh, there as well. Place War is the other one that I want to talk about. Now, Place War has been on our top 20 in a variety of places um, over the past few months. And it's one of those very small games and a very small ecosystem. I shouldn't say small because they do have a big community, but the point being is that if you compare this up to, say, a Sandbox or an Axie, it definitely is an emerging game. Uh, they just opened up their uh, V1 marketplace, which is now finally live. Uh, additionally, what they did is they launched their gear token, which is going to be essentially their SLP for operating inside the ecosystem within it. Remember, this is another one that will have an opportunity to have land, and that's going to come through a project they have within that system called Placidonia. So just be on that. I would check out, uh, also if you're interested in that one, check out our videos on that because we've had the CEO of Place Wars on Place War on our show twice, and Myrtle has really kind of gone into a full explanation of what they're trying to achieve this year in terms of just milestones in their roadmap, and this is a good step in the right direction. Gears, of course, is uh, going to be, I think, a very interesting project to watch and token. Let's get over here to the, because uh, this is, I want to jump back to a Comey real quick, because this is the migration that they're in the middle of. And I'm just going to tease this now because this is something we're going to dive into a lot deeper. But it is the final phase of their ecosystem migration to Immutable X, uh, which is the porting swapping for your OMI tokens from the existing Go Chain, which is what they're currently on, and the existing wrapped OMI uh, to the new Ethereum OMI token. So this is a big deal. And it's, it's essentially going to be uh, finalizing very soon. So we've got this happening literally as we are filming this. Uh, so be on the lookout for this. Now, the, the reason this is important is because Ecomi and Immutable X, you know, it's a great pair. And if you're invested in either, or maybe you're considering either uh, of them, you're in good company. Both those projects are ones that we really like. So we continue to kind of go in that direction. I want to look at um, also in general, where Axie is currently. And one thing that we're doing that is going to be an ongoing scenario here is our CPI, which is the, uh, you know, the Crypto Power Index, is it breaks down two big factors and it also gives us an analysis of where we're uh, placing our sentiment data based on certain points in how price action is occurring. And when we do this on a token, we'll do a, a chart like this where you'll start to see Sentiment moving right here. We did our, our last sentiment right here on the 27th. Axie from where it was, which had, had taken a little bit of a dip right here, 7208 and a 6781, versus where it's showing right now, which is the 7188. Let's go back to that chart. I don't know if we can get back to that chart. Uh, to a 7188 uh, with AMP setting in it at uh, 6829. So this is something that we'll continue to track on some of these projects. Now, what this tells me is that Axie is a little flat right now. I do anticipate that we'll probably see a little bit of a bump for Axie. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, down candles on the four hour. And if you're tracking this closely, then you'll kind of know what's happening if you're following uh, Axie. I don't know if many of you are trading on TradingView, but it's a great tool. You guys should use it. We don't necessarily have our indices available on TradingView. We have to map these in manually when we do our analysis on each of these projects. Now, we are going to do and make that available more and more on uh, our CPI, which will be over available on uh, Paul Barron Network, which you can get to. The other one I want to go to is Ronin. This is the one that just recently listed, uh, and it's waiting for a home, you know, in terms of tradability. But the real functionality is its exclusivity through farming right now. But you can kind of say it's already hit the market. Market cap estimated around 500 million. So that's a pretty big splash to jump out, you know, that quickly for a first day token. So you can learn a lot more about the Ronin Bridge uh, and, of course, the community being around the Axie community right there. They're holding out a 3.5 billion on uh, fully diluted. And you can kind of see where this one is floating. Had a big spike right here on its first initial and then a little movement right here. Again, this one is not listed just yet 
for availability, but this one is one that we are watching very, very closely. And then a couple others that I want to put on your radar, and we'll show this across a variety of our uh, sentiment rankings for this. And I shouldn't say rankings, it's really just a sentiment report to give you kind of an analysis on this particular group that we've selected that are trending. Uh, but one, of course, is this one right here, Sunflower Land. Uh, this is the one that had a little bit of a, a run-in with Polygon. You guys probably remember this a couple of weeks ago. Polygon under accidental attack from the swarm of sunflower farmers, which again, the congestion that we've seen in some of these projects is a little surprising to me. Um, understanding to the level of how these developers are building on this and have been building up for quite some time, this one kind of surprised me a little bit. The other one that I'm interested in is Zuki Moba. Not a lot of news on these guys, and we are going to try to reach out and get Zuki MOBA on the show because I feel like this one is one of those projects that through social it's really well, it trends well and there's a lot of users and in most cases a lot of proponents. What I want to know is um, is this one getting botted up? What I mean by that is in social sometimes you can, you can create bots enough to create traction on projects. I'm not assuming that that's the case but I'm just feeling that this is the only thing that we were able to find on news that was relevant, and this was a press release. So I'm always questionable. I'm a little bit skeptical on many of these projects when I see them pump, and I want to know for sure. So I always reach out and say, listen, we want to talk to you, have you on the show, and learn more about what you guys are doing that are causing people to talk about the project so much. Maybe it's just something that only the inner crowd knows. So that's a big one. I want to jump over to the poll right now. I know we've got some stuff coming up, so let's take a look at what you guys think about the new tokens. So there you go. Which tokens are you most interested in? Obviously the RON token, 35%, and uh, Ecomi, their ERC20 migration, 48%. Place War Gear token made a showing here at 16% for such a small project. I think that's a, it's pretty interesting right there. Actually, the 316 votes, that's a good one. I like that. All right, so the other one that I want you to take a look at is, uh, and we've talked about this one as well. Let me zoom out on this, just can kind of see the, the piece on this one. This one is the five most popular crypto metaverse coins right now on the Binance Smart Chain. I don't know if you guys are following Binance Labs and what they're doing over there. Let me zoom out on that and kind of flow through some of these because you're going to see a handful that you recognize. There's the Second Live, SLT. There's Crypto uh, Ubaby. Now, that one's fairly new. Elfin has been on the list before. And then uh, right there is Mobox, which is a really strong con contender uh, right there on NFT Farmer. And then this one, of course, is Bomb Crypto, which is the number one holding right now, at least on, on the Binance Smart Chain when you look at the popularity index there for that DAP. So this is another one that I like, uh, and it's interesting to me because it's made our list a couple of times now, Bomb Crypto, uh, especially in our top 20 metaverse and gaming, which we're going to try to release that video this week to give you guys the top 20. This is the trending project. So a lot of these will be on that top 20. Some may not make it onto the top 20. Even though they're trending, their score doesn't hold against other projects that have been solid uh, throughout. If you guys have not joined into the Diamond Circle, I want you to just go over to Paul Barron Network right here. You can jump in, join right there. We are doing a giveaway when we launch the CPI. Now, right now, the Crypto Power Index, I'll just do a quick sneak peek of it. This is the new uh, site that you'll have a chance to get in and it will have the top 20 altcoins available, the top 20 metaverse, top 20 play to earns. We're going to be dropping in um, also our overall index, which is going to rank all of the, ba the major projects, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, and rank them against other markets like general, Bitcoin versus metaverse, Bitcoin versus DeFi, those kinds of scenarios. And then you'll be able to see all of our breakouts in our top 20, we'll do our technical analysis on the top threes. Each week, this is coming to you. And then we'll also have some video analysis in there as well. So lots coming uh, on the Crypto Power Index. It will be released. And you guys will get a chance to you know, actually be in there working on and understanding this probably before we even drop it on the show. Because typically, we work off of that data throughout the week to drop videos like what we're doing today on the trending uh, projects. So all that data is where we harvest it from, makes us go look at these projects and jump into those. Let's get over to some questions today. Uh, Ecomi versus IMX. I think it's a, you know, it's, that's a pair. Um, but if you were an investor, if you're an investor and you're thinking one or the other, 
It, I think it depends. If you're a collector, if you're thinking NFTs, you know, IMX is, is you know, a natural. Uh, it's also going to have a lot more um, flexibility in terms of use case. Ecomi is really tied to Vivi. So if you're a Vivi fan or if you're more of an NFT global fan, then I would, if you're a, a Vivi fan, it's Ecomi. If you're a big NFT fan, collectible outside of a Vivi, IMX. Do you think it's a good time to buy Remark and Vulcan Forge? Vulcan Forge is an unusual project because I see so much volatility in that project. It's one of the few tokens that I see up and down anywhere between 6 and 10% often. So it has a lot of volatility, but it has a lot of really good qualities as a project. PYR is definitely one I like. Uh, I do think both those, uh, Remark and also Vulcan Forge, may, may hold. Now, will they make it through a bear market? That's the real question. How many of these projects will make it through a bear market? There's going to be many of these game projects, just like many of the traditional altcoins, that are going to go to zero. You need to be aware of that. And you have to be cautious and due diligent in your research and also how you approach investing. I always recommend, kick out your bottom 20%. Every month, underperformers got to go. They just got to go. And I do it all the time. And, and I, in many cases, you may lose some money on those. You got to just move on to the next project and the next investment, much like many people do on stocks. A lot of traders do it that way. So are you still bullish on Axie? Would you be buying it right now? Yes. That's just a simple, quick answer. Uh, hi, Paul. Is Gala price on the uh, good best entry point? Gala's recovering a little bit. We're going to try to have them on the show again. And I think there's some news coming with Gala that I won't say too much about that because we're going to leave that for the interview, but there's some stuff coming down the pipeline that's pretty big for Gala. So just be on the watch for that. Chromia, been underperforming, but I think, again, if you got in and everybody got surprised by this dip, the key with Chromia is it just has a good potential. Again, I keep it on the bubble list for me um, only because it's it in itself is a unique product or a unique concept around what the metaverse is doing and what Chromia has been able to do from an achievement standpoint. I think they get there. They make it through the bubble in terms of a down market uh, and also their relationship with My Neighbor Alice and just some other gaming studios that I think will, will be a big part of that. So I like that one. Um, okay. What do you think of um, Radio? I think that's Radio Kaka he's talking about there. Uh, I would go with UFO token there, Pauline. Uh, thoughts on big tech? and major game makers possibly turning their content AAA into crypto. For sure, we'll see more and more of that. You know, we have we have some partners, you know, that we work with right now that are big uh, big tech and also AAA studios that are starting to convert to blockchain, meaning more and more of their titles are rolling over to blockchain. So, this is a this is going to happen. Obviously, we know what's what's happened here recently with Microsoft and the acquisition of Blizzard. Or, you know, there's just so much out there that's going on in this space that really kind of, I think, changes the, the format and also the landscape of how we go forward in gaming, which is something I've talked about before. There's two sectors. We had this conversation today in the, uh, in the crypto pit. There's two major sectors for adoption to really occur uh, for crypto and blockchain in general. One is the financial side and the other is gaming. I feel like gaming and finance are the two critical components. Finance is going to happen because of DeFi and the bank adoptions and possibly government adoptions through uh, either USB, you know, central digital currencies, or we're going to see the potential of a digital asset such as a stablecoin coming in from a government. So something like a USDC could eventually become a stablecoin for the US government. And that those kind of things will cause pretty heavy adoption. But on the gaming side, that's the other aspect that I believe is another explosion that's really in the process of happening right now. All right. Thanks for the super chat. We appreciate that coming in from Moments by Andrea. Uh, Axie or Peg? Uh, Peg, Axie, Peg. Ooh, that sounds like it's familiar. familiar. <laughs> uh, I would probably go with Axie. Uh, Peg, Peg Axie is just a little bit young, but even though it's a very hot project and was ranked, we just did a video on this, it, it outranked Zed Run and also d so it was the number one of the three projects that we broke down. So kind of go in there. Uh, do I see Axie hitting 150 soon? Maybe not soon, Sonny, but I do see Axie on an uptrend. I mean, there's just too many things happening 
and too many opportunities. And remember, their first mover, first mover always has a little bit of an advantage. The key here will be how many big blockchain games truly get released this year. If we see a lot more opportunities in play to earn and also digital assets, maybe it steals a little bit of, of the thunder from Axie, but I don't know because they are they're trying to reshift and reconstruct their economy. And if they're successful, then it absolutely, it, because the, the critical mass is there and they just need acceleration now. So just add a little fuel to the fire. As I said, gaming, finance, those are the two things that will be the catalysts that take us in to the next era of growth in crypto. Um, Paul, are you still bullish on Alluvium? Yes, very bullish on Alluvium. I like that project and we'll continue. Uh, should I sell tokens I earned, I earned from gaming or hold them till the bull run? That's a hard one, Isaac. I'd have to know kind of your situation. I don't provide financial advice. I know if I had built up, say, a lot of SLP on Axie Play or something like that, am, I, I might hold it just because, you know, that's me. I, I'm looking more long term. But some people look very short term. You know, short term is inside a year. And, and you have to kind of take your own situation under consideration before you make those kind of decisions. Nexo versus Celsius, uh, Trump tribe. Um, I would say for me, Celsius, I use Celsius and it's one that I've, I'm comfortable with, but I've also had, uh, Alec on our show, the other Alec from Nexo on our show. And I like what they're doing. It's just, you know, it, their, their offerings right now don't necessarily compare to what Celsius is doing. All right. So, uh, lots coming in here. Thoughts on new proposed bill America competes act. Uh, that would ban crypto in the U.S. I saw this uh, coming, you know, the transaction scenario. I think this is a big problem if we see this happen in the United States. It is by far a death nail for our society and for our economy because the future of all things tech are going to be based on the blockchain. And if that is the fact, then the United States, it's like if the United States had not been in on the internet. And I think that will fail miserably. Uh, if that even gets any traction at all, I would be extremely surprised. Uh, so anyway, uh, live is, okay, so you like the show. Give us your thoughts on Bitcoin going down to 30 cows, uh, 30K. Could it hit it? Yes. If we are in the bear market, if we are in the bear market, we will see dip co uh, dip coin. <laughs> That's a good one. We probably should call it that right now. We will see Bitcoin dip again. Uh, and have an opportunity for people who have, remember, Bitcoin is not one of those projects right now that I believe is going to make people super rich or super wealthy. It is a project that is, is and going to be digital gold. It's a long-term play and always and always will be. Now, granted, if you were in on 2017 or 2013, that's a different game. But we're talking now. For people who are coming into crypto today, Bitcoin is a good play for you because it is the next generation of investing. And I think that in itself will help keep Bitcoin relevant. And also, we won't see it be a fall off. It definitely is not going to zero. I'm just feeling like it's 95% to 100% never going to zero. So to me, it's still a very, very good, um, big opportunity. All right. Thoughts on Solana. Um, I continue to watch Solana. I, you know, initially I was a big bull or on Solana in terms of what they were trying to do. I'm just seeing too many weak spots right now. Additionally, there's some uh, some data that I've been researching on Solana that um, has been revealed to me that just in my situation, I'm, you know, I've built and built with developers before and done it in big scale. So I understand how that works. I've led 300 developers. And I understand that. And, and I understand when you're trying to build something the first time, how long you have to, there's a lot of band-aids have to be put on. Let's just be real in you know, those many situations. But Solana has a lot of movement and a lot of, um, I think, issues they have to address to really kind of, you know, even though project, very solid, team, I would say at a B plus, but how they're going forward in the position they're in right now, things have to change for Solana but they could and, and easily just completely ramp right back in. So I'm kind of on the fence right now with Solana. So just so you know, uh, Roko Piri, Red Fox, I like it. You know, I'm going to do a, um, I think we're going to do a Twitter space. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A Twitter spaces with Benny 
uh, from Red Fox, their CEO. So be on the lookout. I'll get you guys the date on that when that happens because then we're going to do a, just a Q&A uh, about what they're doing. Better upside sandbox or gala upside sandbox gala. Mm. Ooh. That's a 50-50 for me. I would probably hedge my bet and go both routes just so I'd put a little, if I had you know $1,000 and I was saying, hey, I want to play on both, would I hedge one over the other? I don't think I would. Gala's got a lot of potential. And the key with Gala, with Sandbox, there's a little bit priced in. So it's probably going to grow, grow slower, but it's a good value. With Gala, it has the potential to go vertical, but it also has the potential to fall to the floor. So you've got to be cautious with those kind of th- things. So I would kind of hedge my bet a little bit on projects like that. All right, listen, thanks for all the questions today. Been great having you guys in. Of course, you're listening over on the podcast right now. You've got to get over here on the YouTube channel because this is where all the action happens. It's where the magic comes in. And it's also where you're going to see our charts, our analysis, our sentiment breakdowns, and our interviews, along with all the other things we do here include our giveaways. So like I said, when we launch the CPI, we're going to be doing a big giveaway. So you want to make sure and sign up for that Diamond Circle now because that's how you're going to get in on that one. It's $1,000 in Bitcoin. So... Don't miss that live stream. All right, if you guys want to reach me, it's out on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.